Welcome back to part 5 of my series on simple flies that I catch most of my fish on. I'm Rod Kletke and today we will be looking at the WD-40, which classically represents a blue-winged olive emerger. As we finished the previous video on the simple wrap dry fly, we were discussing a heavy hatch of blue-winged olives. While very exciting, super hatches continue to be one of my most frustrating experiences on a trout stream. My simple wrap dry fly is competing with numerous naturals on the surface, and often not that successfully. While much of this applies to other super hatches also, for me this has been most commonly a blue-winged olive emergence. During these heavy hatches I've learned that fishing different waters may require different flies, different trout may key on different triggers, and while the various types of blue-winged olives are very similar, we can't always fish all blue-winged olives on all waters exactly the same. The simple wrap dry fly, or a similar fly with a little flash, has usually worked adequately for me in riffles or lightly fished waters during these heavy hatches. As trout are only taking a small percentage of the naturals, many casts may be needed, but then this is part of the fun. However, the simple wrap dry fly hasn't been adequate at all times, especially on quiet waters and heavily fished waters. On quiet waters, blue-winged olives, especially the smallest types, have a fairly prolonged subsurface or in the surface emerger stage, and some trout, especially on heavily fished waters, seem to be surface shy. That's when the WD-40s have been helpful. The WD-40 is another simple fly to tie, represents a blue-winged olive emerger, and should be in your fly box for these occasions. So let's tie one. Then we'll discuss how to fish it and when it may be helpful. Incidentally, many of the steps in tying are shown only as still photos, which allow pointing out certain features, but this assumes some fly tying experience. If you need help with any of these steps, don't understand thread kick or other terms I use, Please review my series on beginning fly tying, rotary vice techniques, or some of the other series that have had more complete tying videos. Depending on the genus and species, blue-winged olives vary in size, but WD-40s seem to work best for the smaller blue-winged olives. This makes sense, as smaller organisms generally have more trouble breaking the surface tension on quiet water, so are more likely to become concentrated in the subsurface as emergers, stillborns, etc. I'll tie WD-40s in sizes 16 to 24, but I use mainly size 20 and smaller. I'm using a size 20 merger hook with an oversized eye, and I'm using 8 aught olive thread to represent a blue-winged olive emerger. The hook is slightly slanted down at this stage to make it easier to tie the tie tail partially around the hook bend. I believe the WD-40 got its name from wood duck flank feathers used for the tail and wing case rather than the lubricant, but I have no idea where the 40 came from. This is fake wood duck, which is usually what I use. Many use mallard flank feathers or a miscellaneous feather like this for a tail. I do like soft feathers and some color variation. Don't use a stiff hackle feather. You do want the tail to sink. If you pull the fibers perpendicular to the stem before cutting them off, the fiber points will align. Putting a tail on such a small fly is the only difficult part of tying this fly. Again, good lighting and magnification help. Measure the tail for length and hold it in place with the left hand. Spin the bobbin counterclockwise so the thread kicks into your left hand fingers, and then take a few wraps, or you can try using a soft wrap to get it started. Try to keep the tail fibers on top as you wind the thread to the tail placement point, which is slightly down the bend of the hook. Then wind the thread uniformly forward a little over two-thirds of the way, keeping the front of the tail fibers on top as needed. This creates a thin, non-dubbed abdomen. Don't cut the excess front tail fibers off, but bend them back and wrap a few turns of thread around them to hold them in place. I usually straighten the hook shank at this point for easier tying. Put dubbing on your thread. I usually just dampen the thread with water and then use gray dubbing as this most closely matches the blue-winged olives that I fish. I usually use a super fine dry fly dubbing, which I'm not showing, but if you want a little more flash, you can use your favorite dubbing with a little or a lot of flash. I will occasionally tie a strand or two of flashaboo before the dubbing and bend it back towards the hook bend. 
but I rarely use any flash for a WD-40 for reasons of which I'll explain later. Dub a large thorax. This is supposed to represent the swollen thorax of an emerging blue wing olive just before the wings emerge, so don't worry if it looks way too large. Likely this is a trigger point. Fold the front tail fibers over the top of the dubbing and put a few thread wraps just behind the hook eye to hold the fibers in place. This creates a dorsal wing case. Pull the fibers back, take a few wraps in front of the fibers to lock them in place, then clip off the excess, wrap a small head, and whip finish. A small head will help to be sure that the hook eye is clear of materials. Putting your tippet through the eye of a small hook is difficult enough. Don't make it even harder by crowding the eye with tying materials. Now we've tied some WD-40s, let's go fish them. The WD-40 is a surface or in a subsurface or in the surface emerger, so it makes sense for mayflies that emerge just below or on the surface. I especially use it for the tiny blue-winged olives that have a tough time breaking the surface tension to emerge on flat, quiet water, but I'll still try it on relatively flat water for almost any blue-winged olive emergence or even other mayflies. Sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't seem to work even for the same species, on the same type of water, even a few days apart. Fishing is not an exact science. Does interpreting rise form help? Well, we all know that if rises are leaving bubbles, these fish are taking fish off fl flies off the surface, and if you're only seeing swirls, backs, etc., and no bubbles, these trout are taking subsurface flies. It seems that should help determine when to fish a subsurface fly like the WD-40. But even with lots of fish taking surface flies, some individual trout may be surface shy, especially if you're fishing heavily fished waters. So if you're not having luck on the surface, try an emerger anyway. A lot of times you'll be pleasantly surprised. Since I'm usually fishing a blue-winged olive emergence, and want the WD-40 just below the surface, most commonly I'll use it as, as a dropper off a simple wrap dry fly to represent a blue-winged olive also. I usually drop it a foot or more off the bend of the dry fly. I try to avoid the two flies getting into conflicting currents that cause cross drag. Sometimes this means the flies should be closer and sometimes this means they should be further away. I still want them close enough that the dry fly functions well as an indicator. These are small flies, so I usually use 6X tippet to the dropper. I then fish the two together as I did the simple wrap dry fly in previous videos, fishing quartering downstream or downstream and across with a reach cast to keep it dead drifted without lining the fish on quiet water and quartering upstream on riffles. If you want to review these casts, please see my series on Fly Fishing Hatches Part 3, where I show these casts for fishing the Trico Spinner Fall. They are the same casts. I can avoid cross currents best when I have only one fly on. So if one fly is working significantly better, I'll remove the non-productive fly. Of course, you have to pay very close attention if you're fishing the subsurface emerger only. This is not as hard as it sounds when fishing relatively close on flat, quiet water, so be sure to try it. But what if you're not catching fish during this hatch? First, you should be sure that you're fishing the correct organism, have the correct size, correct stage, and have the correct tippet size and length. This problem is covered much more thoroughly in my series on fly fishing hatches, so you may want to review that series also. But sometimes, far too often in fact, I find I'm doing, ev or I think I'm doing everything right, but still not catching fish. Even with my fishing partner's help, we can't figure it out. I usually have to console myself that many naturals are being ignored also, so it shouldn't be a surprise that my flies are being ignored. Authors of trout fishing books write about putting super triggers in your flies, something that will trigger the trout to take your fly rather than the numerous naturals that are being ignored. I think this is a great idea, but so far I haven't figured out these super triggers. I haven't found anything that consistently works for me, so usually I just keep casting away. 
Some suggest a slightly larger fly. I've usually done better by going slightly smaller, even smaller than the naturals. Some suggest slight movement, again emphasizing the slight. This seems to work for me with midges, but it hasn't helped me appreciably with mayflies. Some suggest a little sparkle in the flies. I think this may help sometimes, so as discussed when we were tying the WD-40, I will put a little sparkle on some of my WD-40s and other flies, but sparkle seems to work best when there is sunshine, which causes the sparkle material, well, to sparkle. The best blue-wing olive super hatches I've seen have occurred on overcast to rainy days. I don't really believe that much in the old dictum of a bright fly on a bright day and a dull fly on a dull day, but so far sparkle hasn't helped me much during a blue wing olive super hatch. I haven't given up on sparkle though, but I'm still looking for even a better solution. Any ideas out there? Do I only fish the WD-40 during hatches, or do I fish the WD-40 during non-hatch times in a searching mode? Well, on the bighorn one morning, there were no rising fish, and I was search fishing, or thought I was search fishing, with a zebra midge and a WD-40 in tandem, using a small split shot to get both flies deep. The midge always makes sense on the bighorn, as there's almost always a low-grade midge hatch there and another fisherman had mentioned that the trout were taking small WD-40s. Both flies took equal numbers of trout that morning, but the WD-40 did seem to be working better as we approached time for my lunch, which is usually about 2 o'clock for me when I'm fishing. I thought the WD-40 was likely functioning as a midge, but looking back, I think this was during a pre-emergence of blue-winged olives, so this wasn't during a non-hatch time after all. Commonly, the blue-winged olive nymphs become active several hours prior to their emergence. Usually, I'd be fishing a small pheasant-tailed nymph during this time as a dropper off my searching nymph, but on heavily fished waters, so is everyone else. So sometimes the WD-40 may work better. And yes, there was a blue-winged olive emergence shortly after my lunch break, but still, don't overinterpret a single day's experience. Well. Are you tired of tying all these small flies? They are extremely, extremely important, and I do cast, catch most of my trout on small flies. But let's take a brief break from small flies and hatches and tie an extremely simple fly for search fishing. I'm Raj Kletke, and I'll see you soon.